Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to IndyCar on the 8th of June. This morning's topics are, well, kind of difficult to express this without offending people, but there's a number of things which bother me about the current situation that we're in. Yesterday, I was reporting on the fact that Scotland's inward investment is improving. Uh, it's improving against the backdrop of declining in the inward investment in the rest of the United Kingdom. And I was asking the question of why this might be. Why is Scotland a more attractive place to invest at the moment than the rest of the UK? And I posited the idea that people investing in Scotland are beginning to see that um, the future of Scotland is looking very different from that. The rest of the UK, Scotland is moving in a different direction. However, there's a limit to this, uh, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today is the fact that inward investment into Scotland could be doubled or tripled quite easily if investors knew with certainty that things were going to change. One of the things that investors hate the most is uncertainty, and the reason why the rest of the United Kingdom is performing so badly in inward investment is because of the giant uncertainties created by both Brexit and COVID-19 and a dithering incompetent British government which seems to have no clue at all how to solve the problems which it itself has created through Brexit and its laggard response uh, to the COVID pandemic. So what I'm proposing here is that things change a bit uh, for the Scottish government. Many people have criticised the SNP for not moving fast enough on independence and I have to say that uh, I have never been happy about the gradualist approach to independence that's being taken. I've compared this to a kind of uh, tantric politics where the goal is set and you hear the words independence being bandied around every time there's an election and as soon as the election is over all talk of independence disappears and the troops having been led up the hill are then led back down again and everything returns to the status quo. The status quo obviously isn't good enough if we want to be a successful nation, then investors, first of all, need to know that we're going to be independent. They need to know when people are going to be offered the chance to vote on it. And they need to be pretty certain that the population is going to vote for independence so that they know their investment is well placed uh, and that whatever they're investing in, whichever businesses they invest in in Scotland, are going to be a success and are going to expand. To do that, you need certainty. And this is what is lacking in the Scottish government's approach at the moment. One of the biggest problems for any government is its short-term focus on what's happening immediately. It's faced with firefighting. In other words, it's faced with dealing with problems here and now. And that is the same for any government. It's a reality of politics. So the Scottish government is, quite rightly, dealing with COVID and planning ahead for how to get out of COVID and to generate a recovery, which is a necessary function of government to protect the people from the danger of the pandemic and to create a steady and um, positive movement back towards some form of reality. However, the difficulty here is if you do want the country to be independent, one of the biggest problems that you face is generating enough support for that in order to make it happen. And the lack of any firm date on independence at the moment is hampering that effort. When I mentioned tantric politics, the idea of leading people towards a goal and never actually reaching it, I mentioned uh, two or three days ago that I felt that we were developing what's known as mission drift. In other words, we have a goal and then it suddenly starts moving further and further away. We were initially told that if we were taken out of the uh, European Union without our consent that there would be an independence referendum and there was going to be one and then Covid came along and the ball was back up on the slates. However, the problem of Brexit has not gone away and we know for a fact that most of Scotland's food exporters have been either badly affected or put out of business by Brexit already and that means it's too late for many of these small uh, fresh food exporters to Europe to survive and therefore they've been let down. Now you could blame it on COVID, um, it would be easy to do that, but as I say if people are going to invest in Scotland they need some certainty. It's been revealed in the EY 
think it was the EY uh, company which did the survey on Scotland's inward investment, and it revealed that Scotland's inward investment was growing at about 6% per year, as opposed to a decline of 13% per year in the rest of the UK. But what was interesting is what was being invested in. The things which were being invested in the most were the tech industry, that sort of computers and things like that, the agri-food business. Now that is interesting because that's talking about meat, vegetables, fish, shellfish, seafood, um, and presumably things like beverages, whiskey, beer, and spirits. But those are where the investments are going. And not only that, but they're going into the service industries. So we're talking about banking, insurance, we're talking about the kind of businesses which operate within an internal economy. So there's encouraging news there. But imagine for a moment if these same investors knew that in two years time, Scots were going to vote to become independent and that it was very, very likely that it was going to happen and the United Kingdom was going to be history as far as we were concerned and Scotland was returning to the European Union and full trade again with the European Union. And imagine the effect that would have on the inward investment. So we can't have inward investment growing uh, unless we have some certainty. Now the other problem here is if you want people to vote for independence, then independence has to be better than the status quo. So while we're blowing our own trumpets about inward investment growing in Scotland at the moment, we have to remember it's growing against the backdrop of being stuck in the UK. Now very quickly it, it begins to appear to people that being stuck in the UK means that we are still going to get inward investment at 6% per annum increase. Now that in itself creates the feeling amongst people that you don't need independence, that Scotland can grow its uh, inward investment anyway, despite what's happening in the rest of the UK. But there's a limit to this. And you can't win independence if the status quo looks okay. And that's the problem. We need certainty for investors. We need investors to know that not only are their investments going to grow, but they're going to grow exponentially. They're going to make a fortune out of investing in Scotland. The only way to do that is to, first of all, name the day, even if it's two years away, but give them some certainty as to the date, and then to declare publicly a legally binding contract with the people of Scotland and with the investors who are investing in it, that certain things will definitely happen. One of those things has to be an instant... Um, what would you say, an instant reinstatement of trade with Europe, even if it means doing an emergency deal, a quick deal, to re-establish trade while Scotland is negotiating its re-entry into the Union. Now, there's always this question of, should we have a referendum on joining the EU? I suppose democratically we should, but there's a pressing need to do it without having a democratic vote, and that is the need of companies and the needs of people's jobs and livelihoods across the entire country, including, I might add, the highlands and islands, because many of the rural food jobs and things like um, fish farming is one of those, shellfish farming as well, and fresh food generally coming from Scotland, these need that certainty. They need to know that they will be able to export without let or hindrance back into the EU. Now, if you do that, you will instantly gain massive amounts of support from the business community because they know that investing in Scotland is going to produce a return. You also gain uh, massive support for independence because the public clearly sees not only a goal, not just a suggestion of what they're going to do, but a written legal contract with the people that not only is the Scottish government, whichever form it takes, going to do this, but it is legally obliged to do this, that there is a guarantee of success. One thing builds upon the other. The certainty creates the support. The support drives the need for, uh, drives the enthusiasm for independence and actually manifests itself as a guaranteed result. And it's this kind of momentum which is lacking. So what I'm suggesting today is that the Scottish Government, which I know already has a constitutional department within its ministry, rapidly expands that portfolio. The SNP is talking at the moment with the Green Party about some kind of a deal. And what would make the most sense to me, at least at the moment, is to incorporate 
more members of the Green Party, more Green MSPs into the Scottish Government to expand the portfolio and to write these guarantees. So in parallel with the COVID recovery, you have another department which is not just thinking about recovering from COVID, but which is writing this guarantee, which is writing this particular contract with the people and with its potential investors with a clearly defined um, series of events which will take place, which are not subject to the whim of democracy, because at this stage we can't afford to do that. Yes, we need to be democratically voting for independence, that's a given, but we need to restart trade with the European Union quickly, and that means we need to have a guaranteed method for doing that. That means negotiating with the European Union quietly so that the, we already have this um, legal and watertight ironclad contract with the EU ready to sign when independence is declared so that we can start trade without having to miss a beat, without having to wait for years and years. And all of these things, like everything else I talk about in this programme, is perfectly feasible. But government, Scottish government, needs to be expanded. The ministry which deals with um, industry, which deals with foreign affairs, which deals with the constitution, uh, and which deals with inward investment, all needs to link up to produce not a blueprint for independence, but a concrete cast iron contract with the public and with investors, which states categorically what will happen. Guarantees are very, very rare in politics, and polit politicians generally don't like them because it commits them to do things. The Scottish Government is no different from any other government. It is largely neoliberal in that it follows the usual uh, dictates of market capitalism, free market capitalism. I talked the other day about the idea of democratising the power grid by allowing a certain uh, amount of energy production to be made by private individuals to be sold um, into a kind of mini power market, um, particularly advantaging people who want to work at home. Now that's just one possible idea, and people have said to me that's a bit socialist, but what I'm proposing here is very far from socialism. This is very much free market neoliberalism um, in the raw. We need a Scotland which is going to expand rapidly. The other thing that we have to remember when we're offering investors the chance to invest in this new version of Scotland is the fact that we need to have a central bank and we need to have a currency. Even if we were to adopt the euro temporarily as our trading currency, we could still keep using a Scottish pound for internal uh, deals. But whatever we do, there needs to be a guarantee that, first of all, there will be a Scottish Treasury Bank which issues uh, currency to the rest of the, the, the Scottish state. And they also there also needs to be bond sales. That means the Scottish Government needs to sell investors a guaranteed return if they invest in Scotland as a country, not just in its uh, businesses. So all of these things produce that guaranteed return for investment. And at the moment, we're not hearing anything about this. And that's the thing that worries me at the moment. There is a clear need for this. Much of the problem that we face at the moment is apathy. The public in Scotland, having voted an SNP government in, sees absolutely nothing happening towards independence at all. The SNP is terrified of any kind of negative uh, media coverage caused by the mere mention of the I word in any political statement. They need to get over this straight away. They need to both emphasise COVID recovery and in the same breath emphasise planning for the independent state so that we know the recovery is coming, we know people's jobs will be secure, we know that there are efforts being made to try and create a new normality in the country, but at the same time there is a long-term plan in place which offers these guarantees to foreign investors, and not only that, but to investors in Scotland and in the rest of the UK to invest in Scotland. Remember that many UK companies have been forced to relocate into the European Union. It would be an awful lot easier for many of these companies to simply relocate to Scotland, which is, after all, another English-speaking country. It uses the same, um, the same currency at the moment 
and it would be very much easier for a lot of British companies to relocate to Scotland if they had a guarantee that that was going to happen, that Scotland was going to be guaranteed free trade back into Europe without let or hindrance. And remember, that also guarantees free trade into Northern Ireland and into the Republic, our nearest neighbours. All of these things are omitted at the moment from Scottish government messaging. This needs to happen and it needs to happen now because people are switching off in their droves on independence. If you look at social media across the board, you see lots of lovely pictures of Scotland. You see people creating music, creating artwork to do with independence. You see people um, posting their, about their hopes for independence, but there's absolutely no political leadership whatsoever coming from government. There is nothing, and it is about time that changed. It's possible, believe it or not, for the Scottish government to negotiate with the European Union before it becomes independent. It doesn't have to have um, signed anything yet, but it can do the preparatory work. And I know the Scottish government is terrified of revealing any of its plans to the United Kingdom for fear of provoking a, a backlash and b a firestorm of negative media campaigning. But the fact of the matter is that as long as the Scottish government is relying on British media to carry their messaging, they are never ever going to be able to get their message out properly, not without it being shot down by the BBC, who will load uh, the audience and the, um, the opinion pieces in the press, and on TV and on radio against independence. The only way to do this is to go behind their backs and get on with the job of actually planning for and delivering a contract with investors and the people. That has to happen. People need to know what independence will be this time. The biggest mistake that was made in 2014 was not defining precisely exactly what people are voting for. That means a guarantee on um, state pensions, an absolute guarantee, a doubling of state pensions. It needs to be set in stone and written into legislation so that it can instantly uh, be uh, adopted as Scottish legislation as soon as independence is achieved. These things must be guaranteed. Without those guarantees, everything is just a wish list at the moment and nobody will be convinced by it. And this is the reason why independence is hanging in the balance of 50% at the moment. There is a lot of talk about the fact that the independence movement and the political parties which are proposing and supporting independence are fractured at the moment. The SNP is allying itself with the Greens, which is good, but we can't forget that ALBA still exists. ALBA may not be a huge force in Scottish politics, but it represents a big chunk of political pro-independence opinion. And that opinion wants independence to happen faster. And there is nothing wrong with that. The internal battles and the slagging off between ALBA and the SNP must stop completely. If the SNP were to do something like this and to create this concrete uh, contract with the population and with investors and with businesses, then I am almost certain that the ALBA party would throw its weight behind it because that's what they want to see. They want to see concrete steps taken towards independence. There's nothing wrong with that. I would like to see all of the infighting stop as well, the same as everybody else, but I can't see any prospect of that happening as long as independence is firmly in the back burner, on the back burner at the moment, and not talked about for fear of generating negative uh, British media headlines. We can't be frightened of stating our intentions. It's a bit like, um, you know, being a member of a religion, but being frightened to tell people in case they, they react badly to you. You have to have the courage of your convictions or you're never going to win anything at all. Remember, <laughs> History is written by the people who bother to turn up, and at the moment we are just not turning up. We are relying on the SNP to get leadership in this. They are the only viable party which can deliver this, and right at the moment they're not doing any work on it, or if they are doing work on it, nobody's being allowed to know about it. There needs to be communication. There needs to be not just encouragement for people to keep supporting independence, there needs to be a reason to support independence. And right now, the only reason we have 
is the political deficit, the fact that we're not represented properly and that we're not listened to. We hear that day in and day out. The SNP is constantly saying the British government doesn't listen to us. They don't hear Scotland's voice. We know that. But what are you going to do about it? Let's get some positive, concrete, definite plans for independence that we can all get behind. Because without that, there is no hope of breaking this stalemate and lifting people out of this funk of depression that we've all fallen into. We need our party to start actually working on independence and actually telling us what we will be voting for. Because without that, the status quo as it is at the moment with just 6% uh, gradual increase in inward investment will be the status quo. And unless you can prove that independence is going to be better than that status quo, nobody will vote for it because they're all going to say, well, I'm going to go with the devil I know because we're getting 6% growth in inward investment. Where's the 20% in inward investment? Where's the 100% in inward investment going to come from? These are the things that will propel people towards independence, not vague promises. COVID recovery is important, but it's not the only thing. There must be a long-term plan. And right at the moment, we're only looking at the next five years. And even then, we don't even know when independence, uh, an independence referendum will be held, or if it will be held, when it will be held. We just know the question will be, should we be an independent country, yes or no? Well, great. But what is that independent country going to do? What will it be? And what will the Scottish government at the moment commit those uh, new politicians in that new Scottish state to having to do. And this is why a written constitution is important, because without a written constitution, those new politicians will be under no compunction whatsoever to do anything new. And this is what I'm saying to you. You need to have a, not just a pledge or a promise, not just a vague hint of what you're going to do. People need to know what they're signing up to. You wouldn't buy a new car unless you knew how much it was going to cost you. You wouldn't invest in a new house unless you knew that that new house was in the right place and that its value was going to go up. So you can't expect people to support independence unless they know exactly what your plan is. The SNP at the moment is not doing this and if it is doing it, nobody's hearing about it. So let's stop being scared of what the British press is going to say about us and let's make those plans communicate them to the people so that all of the pro-independence parties can throw their weight behind it and move forwards without all the bickering. Because until we have that goal absolutely coalesced and solid and visible to everybody in this country, nobody is going to want to vote for independence or those who will will be the same ones who want it at the moment. We need to convert people and money talks, let's face it. If you talk to business people in Scotland, they want to know how much more profit they're going to make. They want to know how easy their trade is going to be. They want to know how many jobs they can create. They want to know that the market's going to expand. And that isn't obvious to them at the moment because we only have this vague notion that we're going to vote for independence. And then maybe we might actually vote to join the EU or maybe we might be allowed to rejoin some years in the future. That's just not good enough. Things need to happen faster than that, and they need to be certain. That's my message today. We need certainty, we need communication, and we need a legally binding contract with the whole country about what is going to happen the day after independence. There needs to be definition, there needs to be a, a physical constitution signed by the Scottish Government into law, which not just guarantees that things will happen, but makes it their legal duty to do the things that have been pledged. Without that, everything is just promises. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.